2023 has been an utter disaster for Disney, a miserable one for CEO Bob Iger. Now he's facing a proxy war that may well end his second stint as CEO prematurely, making his legacy one of failure. Investor Nelson Peltz is gunning to take over Disney. If successful, his first order of business would be to oust Iger and replace the Disney board of directors to effect change in the company's direction. Let me give you a little background to set the stage for the second coming of Iger. The story of Bob Chapek's unceremonious departure has been told by a few streamers, but not everyone got it right. Iger agreed to come out of retirement and resume as CEO late last year at the request of Disney's board of directors. Listen, the frickin' dude never left the building. He was in our headquarters, and people saw him all the time. He kept his office. He was the least retired retired guy I've ever known. On November 18, 2022, a Friday, Iger closed the deal to return as CEO. However, Iger demanded that the board be rid of Bob Chapek before the following Monday, or the deal was off. Iger didn't want the awkward conversation with Chapek. There was a lot of animosity between the two. Chapek wanted to be a real CEO, run things his own way, while Iger really wanted a puppet to control and a fall guy during the flu season. On that Sunday, November 19th, Chapek and my boss, Kareem Daniel, were set to appear at Elton John's farewell tour stop at Dodger Stadium, an event that we would be streaming live on D+. We had already completed our early rehearsals. We were waiting around for the event to begin with a VIP meet and greet with Elton John prior to the concert. Then the phones began ringing, mine included. The word was going out. The board had intercepted Chapek and Daniel on the way to the event. They were told they were fired and not to appear at the concert. I personally have never seen Chapek again. He went into the wind like he went into witness protection. Oh, okay. Now, you should know this. None of the problems that Disney has been suffering from these past two, three years were exclusively Chapek's doing. Not even close. Chapek did make one big misstep when he caved to the woke mob inside of Disney. Disney is seriously infected with the woke mind virus. Chapek's first instincts were right. He wanted Disney to stay out of politics. Unfortunately, he ultimately committed an unforced error, bowing to the pressure to appease the alphabet activists. This meant taking up the battle with the state of Florida over the Parental Rights in Education Act. This decision caused massive damage to Disney, not just today, but long term. The fight with DeSantis in Florida had the tragic result of losing Disney its special tax district, Reedy Creek. A massive chunk of Florida that encompasses 25,000 acres and houses the Walt Disney World parks, resorts, and associated infrastructure. Disney had enjoyed virtually a free reign in this zone since 1967. Disney could govern their own property as they wished. They were exempt from needing building permits. They were exempt from building inspections. They were exempt from state and county zoning and code laws. They could and did levy their own taxes on residents and merchants to pay for infrastructure like roads, utilities, fire, and emergency services. They functioned as their own de facto government. But by taking up the side against parental rights and threatening the legislature in Florida, Chapek soured the relationship who dissolved Reedy Creek. Along with it, Disney's ability to expand and develop on demand. The net effect of this isn't even fully known yet, but it could tally into the billions over time. But more importantly, this decision also damaged Disney's family brand, alienating a significant portion of their customers, particularly families with small children. I've read many emails that have been sent, spoken with LGBTQ plus employees and their allies, met with advocacy groups and convened my own leadership team. And I have been taken by the honesty, the openness and the urgency of their stories. I want you to know that you- Wow, <laughs> that never gets old. It's more embarrassing every time I see it. 
They did everything in that video they could to make Bob look like a little boy who got caught misbehaving. This was Chapek's huge mistake. He owns it. However, most everything else plaguing Disney started with Iger. The slate of horrible movies, terrible animation, live action remakes, and most of the Disney Plus abominations were all started under Iger. Employing the much hated Parks Reservation System, which by the way was well into development before COVID ever hit. COVID just provided the cover to launch it. It was Iger's idea to control crowds, ending the FastPass system and replacing it with the pay-to-play Genie Plus. Iger. Placing undisclosed blackout constraints on annual pass holders. Iger. Reimagine Tomorrow, the horrible DEI initiative that led to issues with slipping cast member standards, changes to classic attractions, labeling historically significant movies as problematic and racist. Also, Iger, rollbacks in perks, rewards, and included amenities, which many customers simply called losing the magic. Also, Iger's ideas. Cost-cutting measures that created the decline in parks and resorts maintenance. This led to everything from ride breakdowns to trash piles and sewage collection issues, loss of immersive theming of guest areas that became generic airport lounges. Guess who started all of that? Chapek did make everything else he touched worse. Charging for resort parking and eliminating trams from the parking lots to the park gates, shrinkflation in food and beverages while lowering the food and merch quality, price hikes on everything. You're lucky you're not paying five bucks for a bathroom. Calling annual pass holders undesirable and fat. That's all on Chapek, and he has to own those missteps. But they're nothing compared to what Iger put in motion before he left. Not to mention the many efforts to manipulate financials to make it appear as if Disney Plus wasn't the money-losing cesspool that it is. An issue that's still working its way through the courts that could lead to heavy fines or even criminal charges. But Disney rehired the failed weathermen to shore up the company, to provide stable leadership, and to put the company back on the right track. A familiar face to reassure investors and the public. Except everyone seemed to forget that it was Iger who put them on the wrong track to begin with. Let's take a quick look at how things are going for Bob now. Disney has lost somewhere between a billion and a billion two in failed theatrical releases. Flop after flop from Strange World to Lightyear to Wish. Ant-Man Quantum Mania to the Marvels. Can we just stop with the multiverse crap? Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery to the Haunted DEI Mansion. All panned by audiences, all massive money losers. Only one cinematic release turned a modest profit during this time. And that was Guardians of the Galaxy 3, earning a profit of around $24-25 million, I think. It didn't lose money, so yay! Disney has poured billions, nearly $4 billion in losses this year alone, into Disney+, Plus, while at the same time losing hundreds of thousands of subscribers quarter over quarter. Disney was forced to spend billions more than anticipated, billions we did not have, buying out Comcast's stake in Hulu. Honestly... While this hurt financially, it was still the smart move to make. Hulu has a stable user base, it's profitable, and has better live streaming technology. Disney stock has rebounded a bit recently, but it's still down nearly 5% since Iger took over. It's way down over half from the 192 per share high in 2021, and has dipped as low as $78, I think, a few months ago. Disney also has a number of legal issues it's still facing that could cost a lot of money to resolve, not the least of which is the continued fight with the state of Florida, investor suits over cooked financials, and a class action lawsuit by 9,000 female employees over wage discrimination. So how does a man named Ike Perlmutter come into all this? Why is he looking to extract a little revenge? Perlmutter is by far not a household name, unless you're into comics or Marvel. Ike is the man who saved Marvel Enterprises from bankruptcy and ultimately started the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There is a lot of backstory here that I encourage you to go research and read for yourself. It's a fascinating story. The MCU went on to become one of the most successful movie franchise, if not the most successful franchise of all time, until Disney got its hands on it. 
Disney purchased Marvel Entertainment in 2009 in a four billion dollar cash and stock swap. Perlmutter received 80 million in cash and 590 million in Disney stock from the sale. However, he wasn't given a seat on the Disney board. I'm not entirely sure if he wanted one, but given what he brought to the table and his business history, it kind of surprised me at the time. Perlmutter instead helmed Disney Marvel Entertainment Unit, which ran projects related to Marvel IP, but not the MCU. Perlmutter separated from Disney on March 29, 2023. I remember this day well. Disney says he was laid off in a cost-cutting move while shuttering Marvel Entertainment. That is simply not true. Make no mistake about it, Perlmutter was fired, not laid off. He clashed with Iger and the board over ballooning movie budgets, decreasing profits, questionable decisions, leftist policies, and poor returns on investment. Iger wanted someone he could more easily manipulate and control, and he found that in elevating Kevin Feige and pushing Perlmutter out. Perlmutter also suffered from some baggage that made him unpopular with Iger and many of the Disney board. That is his support of Ron DeSantis and long-term friendship with Donald Trump. Iger does suffer from severe Trump derangement syndrome. I'll eventually make a video someday of how Iger's political aspirations after Trump's 2016 election is the real root cause of what has caused Disney's downfall. But that's a story for another time. At the time of this recording, Perlmutter's exact number of shares in Disney is a guarded secret, but he has given proxy to a large portion of it to Pelts, boosting his controlling shares to over $33 million or $3 billion worth. That's a pretty stark contrast to the 9.4 million shares Pelts had on his first proxy fight in January 2023, a proxy fight I personally supported at the time and at a cost of some political capital. I joined a group of mostly former Fox employees who also had their own stake in Disney shares and profitability. They were dismayed at the stock falling faster than Biden bending down to sniff a 12-year-old's hair. I saved this for last since I know this is what you really come for. An explanation of a proxy war. What could be more exciting? Technically, this could be fun, at least for me. A proxy war is, is a situation where shareholders in a company try to gain control of that company by replacing the board of directors, who are elected annually with their own slate of board members. It's like a corporate version of Game of Thrones, but with less interesting things like dragons and swords, and more boring things like voting rights and proxy statements. In this thrilling battle, a group of shareholders, often led by an activist investor, in this case Nelson Peltz, of Tryon Fund Management. Think of him like a rogue knight trying to save the kingdom. The rogue knight will try to gather enough support from other valiant shareholders to vote out the current board. To do this, they'll use a magical scroll called a proxy statement, a scroll that details what the new leadership hopes to accomplish and how they'll go about it, along with a request to the stockholder to merge their power with the rogue knight and join his just and righteous cause. I've got my scroll from Tryon a few days ago. I'm all in when the time comes. On the other side, the Disney Empire and its evil overlord Bob Iger will send out its own proxy statement to defend its current board members and request to stay the course. I've gotten that letter too, touting the wonderful current board of directors and how diverse they are. Not mentioning any of them as being particularly competent or knowledgeable, there was no plan provided as to how this wonderful, diverse group would move forward to set Disney on the right path. Hope and prayer just isn't a really good business plan. All of these board members were hand-picked by Iger, who he knew would rubber stamp his decisions. In the end, shareholders will vote at the annual meeting, which should happen in early April 2024. It'll live stream if you want to watch it, if you're particularly bored or a masochist. The current board of directors will either be re-elected or replaced. Disney will either continue on its current death spiral or embark on a change. A pivot towards profit, quality entertainment, and restoring Disney's brand to its former stature. If Tryon and Pelts succeed, Perlmutter will have his revenge on Iger, who will be forced to step down or be shown the door. Perhaps into whatever pocket dimension where Chapek is in prison. And that, my friends, is the thrilling tale of a corporate proxy war. How will it play out? I, I really don't know. 
It's my hope that Disney will embark on a new path. They'll stop chasing the modern audience that doesn't exist anywhere except on social media to find the core audience again. Their core audience. Families. Walt's target audience. They'll stop the far left wing activism and return again to a family friendly brand with entertaining storytelling without all the politics, left or right. That a 100 year company that I've admired my whole life that has meant so much to me and my family will once again thrive and find another renaissance within itself. At least that's the hope. Anyway, that's what I think. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I enjoy reading them and I do try to answer you all. If you've liked what you've heard, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. I'll be back real soon with another video. You take care. Bye for now.